Ladies and gentlemen, it's my very great pleasure to welcome you to the 2018 Law Student Awards. This evening we celebrate our best and brightest. Our students have excelled over the last 12 months. We'll recognise our student leaders, we'll congratulate the students who've won our competitions and represented the Auckland Law School nationally and internationally. We'll mark the achievements of our students who've won prizes and scholarships. What they all have in common is hard work, commitment, perseverance, and a real interest and enthusiasm for the law. I'd like to welcome all the students here tonight who are receiving awards. You've done well, and the members of the faculty here join me in congratulating you. I'd like to welcome your family members and close friends who are able to be here this evening. Our students wouldn't have achieved their success without your support, your encouragement, and your love and you can be very proud of all they've achieved and in knowing that you've helped make their success possible. I'd also like to welcome many of the individuals and representatives of firms and organizations who've donated prizes and scholarships for our best students, who've supported our student societies and the events and competitions they organize, and who've given financial assistance to the law school and what we are trying to achieve. We are immensely grateful the prizes, scholarships, and donations you provide mean a lot to our students. They recognize the hard work, the hours spent in libraries, staying up late at night before exams, seeking to master particular cases, legal principles, and areas of the law. I'd like to welcome members of the legal profession and the judiciary who are here tonight. We're very grateful for the support provided to us, not only in financial terms, but also by helping and mentoring students adjudicating moots and competitions, and supporting student and faculty activities. This is a very successful law school nationally and internationally. We're currently ranked the 29th best law school in the world, a considerable achievement given when you consider that there are more than 5,000 law schools internationally. Last year, two of our students were named the best and the third best speakers in the world at the Jessup International Law Moot. This is the world's most prestigious mooting competition and the achievements of our students were truly exceptional. We're very proud of our students and all they achieve. Several of our award winners are not here tonight because they've commenced postgraduate study at Harvard, Stanford and other leading universities. One of our graduates got the best result in the Cambridge Master of Laws program last year. Auckland Law School graduates have topped the Oxford BCL program two of the last five years. Our students are able to excel alongside the rest of the world. Our graduates go on to have diverse and interesting careers. Many are leaders in the law. Auckland Law School alumni comprise three of the five judges of our highest court, the Supreme Court. Many of our graduates are leaders in government, business, and other sectors. I was struck by the fact that 15% of the intake of new MPs after last year's elections are Auckland Law School alumni. And I was also struck by the somewhat staggering fact that 10% of all MPs, one in 10, are Auckland Law School alumni. As was the case in, pre in the previous government, we have alumni who sit in cabinet, who are ministers, and who hold senior opposition portfolios. So whether you like or dislike what Parliament has been doing, we may share some of the credit or blame. We also have graduates who contribute to the law and to society in all sorts of other ways, from having charge of a major legal aid program in Australia, to representing domestic workers in Hong Kong who have been exploited and poorly treated, and in all sorts of other ways standing up for those who are powerless, who suffer injustice, and face barriers to receiving the protection of the law and the courts. Tonight is about celebrating the achievements of some of our most talented students and reminding them to continue to work hard, to excel, and to contribute as they progress in their degrees, their careers, and their lives, and to thank all of you here for the support you give them. Would you join me in congratulating the Student Society President, Ella Stolwerk. <laughs> The Law Student Society Administrative Vice President, Tom Blackwell.
the Student Society Educational Vice President, James Dalton. The Turako Turi Ko Tumawaki, firstly, Dexter Rapana. And also Ko Tumawaki, Natana Hira Heriwini. The Pacific Island Law Student Society Co Presidents, John Paul Fuliaki. and Tara Lioti Sayuli. The Rainbow Law Directors, John Kingy. And Alex Cranston. The directors of the Equal Justice Project, um, on the other side of the stage, has to come back again, so she's kept being kept quite busy. Um, Ella Stolwerk for a second time. <laughs> <laughs> and the other director of the Equal Justice Project, Jane Wong. <laughs> the editors of the Auckland University Law Review, Michelle Chan. And Jay Kim. And the presidents of the Mooting Society, Naushin Jaya. And Charlie Baker. Would the winners of the Auckland Law School competitions and representatives in national competitions come to the stage? That's up into and including the Sir Robert Chambers Memorial Moot. Um, the international competition representatives will follow as the next group after this. Every year we have large numbers of students compete in the competitions we run in the law school, from witness examination to client interviewing, negotiation and mooting. Firstly, we have the Bell Gully Senior Mooting Competition, and the Stout Shield is our Premier Mooting Competition, the Gary Davies Memorial Prize for Excellence in the Stout Shield, James Rankin. The Jeffrey Powell Prize for the Top Mooter in the Stout Shield, Jessica Pelleray. The winners of the Brian Schenken Family Law Memorial Moot, Elaine Bailu. And we may get the, the winners to come a little bit this way, or it's a very long walk otherwise to get to the stage. So, uh, And then we also, winner of the Brian Schenken Family Law Memorial Moot, Magandri Walker. Winner of the Buddle Finlay Junior Negotiation Competition, Michael Greatrix. The winner of the Buddle Finlay Senior Negotiation Competition, Katie Kerr. And I think has to come this direction, perhaps just straight across the stage rather than, than down and around. Um, in we also have another senior mooting competition as well as the Stout Shield, that is the Greg Everard Memorial Moot, uh, and that was won uh, by Jessica Pelleray. <laughs> At intermediate level mooting, uh, we established a few years ago the John Haig QC Memorial Mooting Competition, 
And the winners this year, last year were Caitlin Anion Peters. And Jack Garden. <laughs> and the winners of the junior mooting competition, so this is people um, who've just gone into stage two, uh, Sophie Shrimpton. <laughs> and Gauri Prabhuka. The winner of the Kylie Thompson Kaisley Employment Law Moot, Shanane Joyce. The KPMG case competition is a business case competition on a legal problem, and the winners this year are firstly Kelvin Lee. Kevin Fun. <laughs> Louise Munn. <laughs> and Yu Wei Xu. <laughs> the winner of the Minter Ellison Rudd Watts Witness Examination Competition, Diana Chu. The winner of the Pacific Lawyers Association Prize for the Pacific Issues Legal Moot, Adi Litia Tui Borelevu. The winner of the Russell McVeigh Junior Client Interviewing Competition, uh, two winners, Jody Llewellyn. And Yvonne Rothwell. Uh, winner of, winners of the Russell McVeigh Senior Client Interviewing Competition, Antonio Bradley. Did you see your name, Antonio? <laughs> and James Rankin. Oh, coming from this direction. <laughs> and the, uh, the next competition is actually for first year mooting, which I always think is quite incredible. We get um, an enormous number of students take part, and this is before students have done contract torts, any of the advanced legal competition, uh, and the, uh, the final was superb to see last year. The winner of the Sir Justice Robert Chambers Memorial Moot, Bronwyn Wilde. You can see how many mooting competition and other competitions we have from the sheer number of people lined up. <laughs> the first team that we have to congratulate participated in the Australia and New Zealand Air Law Moot competition. They went to Adelaide to compete, and they were runners-up uh, in the Australasian competition. Jack Garden received the award for the best advocate in the competition, and the team also received the award for the best respondent written memorial. So if we congratulate, firstly, the team members, Jack Garden. Thank you very much. Well done, Jack. <laughs> and Fraser Galogli. And the coaches of the team, Hannah Reid. And Nick Porter. <laughs> we took part for the very first time in the Frankfurt Investment Arbitration Moot, and I thought the team did superbly, reaching the top third of the competition in the very first year of participating. So congratulations to the team members, Diana Chu. Now Shin Jenna. Well 
and actually coming from the other direction, Fraser Golagy. And the coach of the team, Jack Davies. <laughs> we have taken part for the last few years in the International Chamber of Commerce International Commercial Mediation Competition. This is held in Paris, and this year's team were the winners of the best creative solution uh, used in the competition. So if we congratulate Victor Liu. Well done again, Victor. Rima Shenoy. Well done again, Rima. Tunisia Napier. Well done again, Tunisia. Matthew Jackson. And the coaches of the team, Anna Leonard. And Stephanie Panzik. We won the, the Red Cross International Humanitarian Law MOOC competition, which is a competition of all the New Zealand law schools last year. That meant that we got to take place in the Asia-Pacific uh, International Humanitarian Law Competition, and we reached the semi-finals and also received the award for the best defence memorial. If we congratulate the team, Danyon Chong. Congratulations, Danyon. Nathan Whittle. Really well done, Nathan. And Adam Hyams. And our coach, uh, who coached two teams, so was very busy, uh, Hannah Reid. <laughs> and we've also competed for several years now in the William Viss Commercial Arbitration Moot. Uh, that actually involves, if you think that the other teams, uh, I suppose these are really quite transformative experiences for our students coming up against international competition, uh, travelling to uh, overseas law schools to compete. Uh, this team, I think, gets the best deal because they got to take part in four preliminary moots, uh, which sort of works them up into match condition. They won the preliminary, and they, these preliminary moots involve uh, very large numbers of teams. So our team won the preliminary moots in Heidelberg and Belgrade. They were ranked second in Stockholm and third in Budapest, so not a bad record in the preliminary moots. They then went to Vienna, where they competed against 370 teams from around the world, they reached the top 16, the quarterfinals. If we congratulate the team members, Caitlin Anion Peters. Really well done again, Caitlin. <laughs> Jessica Pelleray. Really well done again, Jessica. <laughs> Jack Garden. <laughs> and Gillian Yeen. And the coaches of the team, Caitlin Hollings. And Taylor Gray. Really well done, Taylor. Thanks. And again, I think you can see from the number of students, um, you know, that we do have a really, a very real presence in international competitions um, and a large number of students who get to benefit from the opportunities. The new entrant prize winners uh, receive uh, book tokens, and these are awards that are awarded when people are in their final year of secondary school and they are applying for places at the Auckland Law School. So these are incredibly competitive awards. People apply, people uh, come to the law school from around the country, we tend to have on average about 1,400 students in first year law, and tonight we have 18 prizes. So you can see that, um, you know, to receive one of these prizes is a really superb achievement. Would you please congratulate Amy Irvine? Thank you. 
Ann Young. Angus Strum. And Jana Naidu. Aria Toy Lolo Ite. Ariana Bakik. Donovan Kelso. Dylan Buckley. Henry Freer. <laughs> Imogen Bedford. Isabel Ryan. Laura Eno. Well done, Laura. Congratulations. Lillian Hur. Congratulations, Lillian. Well done. Oscar Richardson Reed. Congratulations, Oscar. Well done. Patricia Wirinata. Well done, Patricia. Congratulations. The recipients of this scholarship receive $1,000 each and have really achieved absolutely superb school results. As I mentioned before, there are around 1,400 first-year law students, and that then reduces to 380 students in Part 2 law. And so I would certainly encourage all of these students, the prize winners, the scholarship winners, um, to uh, very high achieving, um, and again, the, the fact that we only have nine scholarship winners, so out of those 1,400 students, nine scholarship winners, again, these are people whose school results were quite stellar. Please congratulate Benjamin Christie. Are you yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Brittany Clasper. Congratulations, Charlotte McKenzie. Dylan Brown. Really well done, Dylan. Ellen Chuadi. Well done, Ellen. <laughs> Katrina Dickens. Congratulations, Katrina. Well done. Oscar Zambutu. Really well done, Oscar. Congratulations. <laughs> Talia Parker. And Tiffany Chi. Congratulations, Tiffany. Really well done. Our guest speaker this evening is the Honourable Christopher Finlayson, QC and MP. Chris Finlayson is someone who cares deeply about the law, about what it means, and about what it can achieve. He holds the highest rank as a lawyer, that of Queen's Counsel, having spent 25 years at Brandon Brookfield, Bell Gully, and then as a barrister, during which time he represented clients as diverse as the ANZ, Briley Investments, the British Government, and the Sisters of Mercy. He represented Naitahu in a range of legal actions including suing the Minister for Treaty Negotiations, slightly ironic given this is a position he would later hold. He's made seven appearances in the Privy Council and appeared in all of New Zealand's courts. 
His depth of legal experience includes teaching civil procedure, conflict of laws and ethics, and co-editing McGeckin on Procedure. I remember Chris coming and talking to a public law class that I taught with Philip Joseph when he was an opposition MP and saying that the position that most interested him in government was that of Attorney General. It is an office in which he's been able to deploy his understanding of the law and the courts to great effect. As Attorney General for the last nine years, he's initiated a range of legal reforms and has displayed an unwavering commitment to the importance of the rule of law and the independent bar. He appeared on behalf of New Zealand in the International Court of Justice in the Whaling case and at the United Nations Security Council to speak on terrorism. This is not to mention his other day jobs. Throughout this period, he was also Minister for Treaty Negotiations, reforming the foreshore and seabed legislation and signing 59 deeds of settlement with iwi, including the Tuhoi settlement and the Parihaka apology. The only large historical settlement now remaining is with Napui. Tuhoi negotiator Tamati Kruger said that Chris Finlayson has an ability to connect emotionally as well as intellectually with what's going on and he has a very fair assessment of how things can proceed towards a settlement. Easily, we call him our friend. As one commentator said, his legacy is moving Aotearoa New Zealand towards an honest future set free from the past. From 2014 until the formation of the new government late last year, Chris was also Minister for the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service and Minister for the Government Communication Security Bureau, portfolios that until then had traditionally been held by the Prime Minister. For six years, he was also Minister of Arts, Culture and Heritage. Suffice to say, the impact of his public service has been immense. To give but one example, 32 people have been Attorney General of New Zealand, but only two others have held the office for longer terms. You have to go back 70 years to find one of the two people who've held the office longer. One of Chris's legacies will continue to be felt in all the courts of New Zealand for some time to come. If you just look at our sitting judges, Chris determined the appointment of all of our Supreme Court judges, except the Chief Justice. He determined the appointment of all of our Court of Appeal judges, except one. He determined the appointment of 33 of the 47 High Court and Associate Court judges. He's had a critical role in shaping the composition of our judiciary going forward and in ensuring the talent and diversity that are represented there. It gives me very great pleasure to ask you to welcome the Honourable Christopher Finlayson. Thank you very much, Dean Andrew, for that very generous, over-generous introduction. I've known Andrew for many years. We were members of the Victoria University Debating Society, and I have to say I've watched with great pride his career over the years. He's been a, a first-class dean of this, the best faculty of law in New Zealand, uh, and that you are the 29th best law school in the world, and we should just repeat that, in the world, is attributable to his leadership, his scholarship, uh, and to the work of others on the faculty. Can I acknowledge my old friend Paul East? Paul was the Attorney General from 1990 to 1997 and held a variety of portfolios. He's a graduate of this law school. He was Minister of Defence, Leader of the House, Minister of State Services, and then served uh, as our High Commissioner in London. He's now a consultant at Bell Gully, one of my old firms. It's great to see you here tonight, Paul. Can I acknowledge my, my old friend, Justice Lynn Stevens? I first got to know Lynn in a very interesting piece of Commerce Act litigation uh, called Fletch Challenge in the Commerce Commission. Uh, and Lynn uh, has served again uh, this university as pro-chancellor uh, and has had a great interest uh, in the law school over many years uh, and served on the High Court uh, and the Court of Appeal. He had probably the shortest retirement in history. He retired from the Court of Appeal bench and within 10 days I had phoned him 
and said, I really would appreciate it if you could do the Havelock North Water inquiry. He spoke to his wife, bad mistake, uh, and said that he wanted a holiday first, but he did it. Uh, and that piece of work, which was published last year, is a very important uh, contribution on a massively sensitive topic. And can I acknowledge all the other members of the profession here tonight? It's so good to see so many of you here and to see that so many of you contribute to this law school uh, through donating prizes and giving of your time to help train people up. Uh, I just want to say something about Auckland University. Uh, I'm a graduate of Victoria. I look, I have to say, somewhat green with envy uh, when I see how well you do in so many areas. And I take, for example, mooting. A couple of years ago, uh, I was uh, helping to prepare the Viz Moot team uh, for, no, it was the, uh, the, uh, another international competition, uh, and the quality of the people who were preparing the submissions and presenting them was truly remarkable. Um, I think Mr Grant's off at Cambridge at the moment, but the quality was superb, uh, and I'm not really surprised uh, that you do so well in all these competitions because excellence is absolutely essential to everything that you do, and I'm so very, uh, as I say, envious of you because I don't think my old law school has got your record. Uh, in fact, uh, Victor uh, Victoria University has got a very good law school, uh, but I regret to say that Auckland, at the moment at least, is better. And that's a massive, that's a massive concession on my part. <laughs> It's, it's interesting to look at the names of the people who are recognised for ever uh, in uh, some of these prizes. And I just, I just sort of was looking through the handbook. I just want to mention a few, because those of you who win these prizes should recognise that there is a name behind uh, the prize. That person made a massive contribution in his or her own way to some aspect of the law. So, for example, I think of Gina Rudland. There's a memorial prize to Gina Rudland, who died far too young, um, a lawyer from Nati Perot, a tough and demanding litigation lawyer, gave me hell during the fisheries allocation issues, and I'm really pleased that Gina Rudland's name is going to live on through that memorial prize, because in her short time at the law, she died of cancer about 20 years ago, far too young, she made a significant contribution to the law. And we must always remember and never forget uh, the late Robert Chambers, another graduate of this university who did so very well in every area of the law, went on the bench so briefly uh, on the Supreme Court. I remember the afternoon, I still remember the afternoon, I learned of uh, Sir Robert's death, one of the saddest days of my life, had so much to give, and we, we will and must never forget him. There's the Martin Finlay Memorial Scholarship. Martin Finlay uh, was a member of the Kirk Rowling Administration, uh, and again, a graduate of this, uh, this law faculty. Uh, he was Attorney General from 1972 to 1975, and a great legal scholar in his own right. I was most interested on page seven of the, uh, the, the booklet to see that a prize has been uh, donated uh, in honor of a person called Erica Pabst. And she was a very early uh, graduate, I think, of this law school. Uh, I first came across Sister Pabst as she became. She became a nun and taught at Erskine College, formerly Sacred Heart College in Island Bay, and she was a remarkable teacher to generations of students who went to that college, but she had studied law uh, and decided to give it up uh, to go into the church. I'm still trying to work out how it is that the New Zealand Society of Notaries Incorporated have donated the Conflict of Laws Prize. Uh, that Conflict of laws, I declare an interest in the conflict of laws. It is the best subject that anyone can study. 
uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed uh, my time as a student of Professor Tony Angelo, who taught me uh, the conflict of laws in 1978. Uh, in opposition, uh, I've uh, often been approached by some of my colleagues about ideas for members' bills, and I automatically go to Dicey and Morris to find some rarefied area of law that they could perhaps introduce uh, legislation on. And I've, I found um, uh, uh, one month ago a piece that's gone through Parliament, Private International Law Choice of Law in Tort Bill, uh, and that was introduced uh, by uh, someone who'd never heard of private international law, but it was um, good for a laugh. Uh, I just want to say two things. The first thing is, when I studied law at Victoria University, and it wasn't a fault of Victoria University, it was a reality in the, uh, in the 70s, there was no course in intellectual property, uh, there was no course in competition law, there was no course in environment law, uh, and I remember studying public law, there was not one mention of the Treaty of Waitangi. In fact, the most notable thing about studying uh, public law under Professor Quentin Baxter in the 1970s uh, was when Professor Quentin Baxter taught us about the reserve powers of the Governor General, and he said, this was in 1976, everyone slept through that particular afternoon when I was teaching the reserve powers of the Governor General, and then a few weeks later, Sir John Kerr fired Gough Whitlam. Uh, but nowadays, of course, any public law clause, course that does not mention the Treaty of Waitangi uh, would be unthinkable. Uh, and so the message that I want to give you tonight is that those of you who are graduating uh, from this university do not think uh, that you will not have to go on learning because many of the subjects that you will be practicing in in 20, 25 years' time may never have been heard of. And you are going to face a bewildering array of challenges uh, in the years to come, whether you are working in law firms or whether you are working in policy and government or whatever. The law constantly changes, the subject areas will constantly change, but the important thing is that you have had a very strong foundation uh, in your years at this law faculty that will make you more able to adapt uh, to new situations which you will come across in years to come. The second point I want to make uh, is that while what I've said is absolutely true, some principles remain the same. We must adapt to changing times while holding fast to unchanging principles. The first one uh, must always be our never-ending commitment to the rule of law, that we are a society governed by the law, not individuals. Every person, no matter how rich or how grand, is a servant of the law, and if people step out of line, uh, they must be brought within the law. The second thing is that there are some fundamental principles that underpin the kind of society that we are. A critical one is the separation of powers. And I have a particular view about the separation of powers. It's something that people learn about at law school, but so often, people do not fully understand. I don't wish to be critical of the Ministry of Justice, but they don't seem to understand at times that the judiciary is a separate branch of government, that judges are not civil servants. You may say, well, you should enter mastermind, your topic could be the bleeding obvious, but this is something that time, in my nine years as Attorney General, I came across time and time again. Sometimes, and I say this with the greatest of respect to judges present, judges don't understand the separation of powers. There was a judgment released by the Supreme Court some years ago that would have treated parliamentary privilege as a species of qualified privilege. Uh, and in, in a rare burst of multipartisanship, we all got together on the Privileges Committee, told the judges they were wrong, uh, and passed the Parliamentary Privilege Act 
uh, that spelt out in clear terms what we members of parliament said parliamentary privilege was all about. So there are always going to be tensions between the branches of government, but the separation of powers is something that all lawyers should zealously guard and protect because, as I say, it's not as well understood in practical terms uh, as it should be. So that's all I, I really wanted to say tonight. The, 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 my final comment is that when you look at the people coming up here to receive prizes uh, and awards, um, all I say to, to, you, to you people is congratulations, obviously, but in the years to come, uh, adopt something as a piece of advice that I was given some years ago that I think is very good advice. Be generous to others, obviously, but be generous to yourself because when you leave law school, well, you're already under a lot of pressure uh, and you go into law firms or go and practice as junior barristers or whatever, you have to be mindful that it's a long journey in which you are engaged and look after yourselves. Uh, I'm as, as is self-evident, I'm not a fitness fanatic, but I do strongly believe uh, in the importance of having time out and not becoming a servant to the law. Because if you become totally dominated by the law uh, and fail to take into account the fantastic world that there is around us, notwithstanding challenges that we face generation from generation, you won't live life to the full uh, and ultimately you won't achieve what you're capable of achieving. But that's for the future. Uh, for tonight, warmest congratulations. All the very best for the future, a future that I'm sure is going to be very bright indeed. My thanks to Christopher Findlayson for his comments and his insights, uh, not least of which that Auckland is the best law school. <coughs> and we didn't pay him to say that. So, the, and as an alumnus of Victoria University myself, um, I can uh, fully endorse what he says. Would the, winners of, and, would the winners and the recipients of the undergraduate prizes and scholarships um, please come up to the stage up, up until the J.P. Campbell Prize, because there are so many undergraduate awards, we're going to do this in two groups. So the winners of the undergraduate prizes and scholarships up, up to and including the J.P. Campbell Prize. Once students have got through first year, and as I said, that very selective process to get into second year law, <coughs> they face the core compulsory second, second year subjects. These are the major areas of conceptual thinking about the law in contracts, torts, public law, crimes, land law, and equity. And once they've completed the compulsory subjects uh, and jurisprudence and legal ethics, I should mention as well among the compulsory subjects, they go on to the elective courses. And we have around 50 elective courses, by far the largest numbers of electives of any of the New Zealand law schools. And we're very fortunate that individuals and firms have sponsored prizes and scholarships for a very large number of these courses, um, but at the expense of making the ceremony longer, you will notice some, um, some subjects aren't covered, so if any of you are feeling particularly generous at the end of the ceremony, uh, you can certainly see me to remedy that. The first award is the A.J. Davis Scholarship in Law and the New Zealand Law Review Prize for the best results in first year law, Janet <laughs> Tay. Congratulations, Jenna, really well done. The A.J. Park Intellectual Property Law Prize, Marie Cassidy. Really well done. Congratulations. The A.J. Park Intellectual Property Law Prize and the Wilson Hall Prize in Commercial Law, Simone Cooper. Really well done. Congratulations. The Auckland Woman Lawyers Association Margaret Wilson Scholarship, Jade McGrath. Congratulations, Jane. Well done. The Baldwin's Law and Information Technology Prize, Benjamin Hamilton. Really well done, Benjamin. Congratulations. The Baldwin's Law and Information Technology Prize, co winner, and the Morris Legal Family Property Prize, Andrew Saunders. 
Congratulations, Andrew. Well done. The Brookfields Lawyers Scholarship are uh, given to a student who's completed Part 2 Law, Catherine Kerr. Second prize of the evening. Well done. <laughs> The Chapman Trip Iwi Governance Scholarship in Law, Amelia Kendall. Congratulations, well done. The Class of 1965 Prize in Commercial Arbitration, Thomas van Scheik. Congratulations, Thomas, well done. The David R. Mummery Memorial Scholarship in Law uh, for Part 2 students, Nisha Senarat Dasa Nayaki. Really well done. Congratulations. <coughs> Minji Young. Congratulations. Really well done. <laughs> the Davies Sproul Memorial Prize, Lafuai Lui Talu. Congratulations. Really well done. <laughs> the Desmond Lewis Memorial Prize in International Law, Daniel Brinkman. Really well done, Daniel and also Jack Garden. Is this about your fifth one? <laughs> well done, Jack. The Dr. R. G. McElroy Prize in Administrative Law, Anthony Camphorst. Really well done, congratulations. And as uh, Christopher Finlayson mentioned, the Erica Pabs Prize honors the memory of Sister Erica Pabst and is given for students who give back to the community and show concern for justice for the weakest members of society, if you can congratulate Jessica Tuhenga. <laughs> Very well done. Congratulations. And the J.P. Campbell Prize, Thomas Atkins. Very well done, Thomas. Congratulations. And would the other recipients of the undergraduate scholarships and prizes uh, also uh, come, uh, come forward to the stage? And this is where I realize I have nothing to say to sort of fill in the gap as I normally do. But the fact that, perhaps I could say the fact that we have so many prizes uh, that we have to take a break is obviously a good sign. And so many students have done so very well, but always room for more. The Johnston Foundation Prizes in Company Law, uh, we have two winners. Uh, the first is Alexandra Bensman. Really well done, Alexandra. And also Mani Shah Sharma. Really well done, the Judge uh, Avinash Diobukta Memorial Prize in Criminal Procedure. Danielle Findlay. Congratulations, Danielle. Well done. The Lexus Nexus Prize in Land Law, Kaziah Singleton. Congratulations, Kaziah. Really well done. The Martin Finlay Memorial Scholarship for a Part 3 student, Darutu Senaraf Dasa Nayali. The uh, Marilyn Eve Mayo Endowment Scholarship, also given to a Part 3 student, Isabel Kelly. Congratulations, Isabel. Well done. Uh, also a co-winner of the New Zealand Law Review Prize for the best results in first-year law. Um, also winner of the Richmond Chambers Prize in Jurisprudence and the Thomson Reuters Criminal Law Prize, Imogen Little. Really well done. That's a real 
and also uh, the third of the co-winners of the New Zealand Law Reviews Prize for the best results in first year law. Uh, and, and as I've said, 1,400 students, so incredibly well done. Jillian Yeehan. The prize um, for which um, our speaker was awaiting an answer, the New Zealand Society of Notaries Incorporated Conflict of Laws Prize, Anthony Yelovich. Congratulations, Anthony. <laughs> the Northey Prize in Immigration Law, Carolyn Coates. Congratulations, Carolyn. You're really well done. <laughs> the Richmond Chambers Prize in Jurisprudence, Freddie Fowl. Congratulations, really well done, Freddie. The Shortland Chambers Prize in Public Law, Ashley Johns. Congratulations, Ashley, well done. The Simpson Grierson Employment Law Prize, Kenneth Suen. Congratulations, really well done. The Sir Alexander Johnston Scholarship in Law and the Thomson Reuters Prize in Torts and Contracts, Diana Chu. Really well done. That's the clear of the The Staples Rodway Phil Banks Prize in Tax Law, James Rankin. <laughs> is that the third award tonight, is it? Yeah. <laughs> and the Thomson Reuters Medical Law Prize, Nikita Bartlett. <laughs> Congratulations. Really well done, Nikita. Would the winners and the recipients of the postgraduate prizes and scholarships please come to the side of the stage? We have a very successful Master of Laws program. Uh, we also offer a Master of Legal Studies for those who don't have a prior law degree, and the law faculty also hosts the Master of Taxation Studies degree. And together, in fact, even if you just take the LLM, the Master of Laws program, uh, the success of our program is such that we have more Master of Laws students than all of the New Zealand law schools, all of the other New Zealand law schools combined. So it really is a very big program, and I think part of its success is each year we bring in a raft of overseas scholars from a number of the leading law schools in other parts of the world um, to teach into the program alongside our own faculty and practitioners. But as you'll see, we only have a few postgraduate prizes, so this really is an opportunity um, begging. Uh, so again, uh, if you know anyone who would like to contribute to a prize or award, uh, we have some really talented master's students, so we'd like to give more of those. But if we now can congratulate the Gaze Burt Prize for the Master of Laws uh, Commercial, uh, so majoring uh, in, in commercial studies, Sasha Daniels. Really well done. Congratulations, Sasha. We have the recipients of the Moana Schwelger Memorial Pacifica Student Scholarship. And firstly, we have Adi Litia Tuiburi Lebu. Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, hidden in the corner there. <laughs> and actually, while she's approaching, the other recipient, Shanika Leilini. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank really well done. Thanks. The top student uh, prize for the Thomson Reuters International Tax. Uh, please congratulate Jordan Curtis. Well done, Jordan. Congratulations. <laughs> and the University of Auckland Law School Dean's Doctoral Scholarship, and so this is um, a really major award, for, so from all the applications we have from doctoral students, uh, the winner of our doctoral scholarship, Zohar Bayat. Congratulations. 
Nathan Zohar. Thanks. <laughs> And would the winners of the Faculty of Law Dean's Academic Excellence Awards uh, please come to the side of the stage. Uh, those who are also receiving Senior Scholarship Awards uh, will be in the next um, group. So this is those receiving the Academic Excellence Awards. Um, and these are awards for the students who are reaching the end of the undergraduate degree. So they've reached the end of the undergraduate degree. They've completed uh, the LLB with honours, the LLB and they have been ranked in the top 10% of the graduating class. So again, given that we graduate um, just over 350 students a year, uh, to be in the top 10% is quite superb. And then uh, these people have been chosen uh, as the very best of those for the Academic Excellence Awards. Please congratulate Andrew Saunders. <laughs> Ashley Williams. We've lost Ashley. Okay. Charlotte Agnew Harrington. Well done, Charlotte. Congratulations. Daniel McGiven. Well done, Daniel. Congratulations. Grant Delisle. Congratulations, Grant. Well done. Yovana Nedlikov. <laughs> You've got a good support team. Thank you. <laughs> Laurie Knight. Well done, congratulations. Marie Cassidy. Second award, really well done. <laughs> Natasha Kuipers. Really well done, congratulations, Natasha. Stephen Rankin. Congratulations, well done, Stephen. And Thomas Atkins. Well done, Thomas. Congratulations. And would the recipients of the Senior Scholars Awards please come to the side of the stage. The next group of students have won Faculty of Law Dean's Excellence Awards and also Senior Scholar Awards. The Senior Scholar Awards are selected by the university and are selected as the very best um, students across all of the faculties. So these people have done superbly well. Please congratulate Callum Burnett. Good to see you again, Callum. Well done. <laughs> Daniel Brinkman. Really well done, Daniel. <laughs> George Dawson. Great to see you. Well done, George. <laughs> Jack Alexander. Really well done, Jack. Congratulations. James Tobies. Really well done. Congratulations, James. <laughs> Jim Milicic. Congratulations, Jim. Well done. <laughs> Tian Nelson. Really well done, Tian. <laughs> and the final award this evening is the Auckland District Law Society's Prize. Oh, actually, we'll do that in a moment. We'll take this photograph first. <laughs> The final award this evening is for the top undergraduate in law, 
So the winner of this uh, award receives the Faculty of Law Dean's Academic Excellence Award, a Senior Scholar Award, but is also recognised as the best undergraduate student of her year. Please congratulate Bridget McClay. <laughs> On behalf of all the Faculty of Law, again, my congratulations to all the students who have excelled in so many ways, whether it be in terms of leadership, contributing to the law school community, whether it be in terms of success and representing this law school overseas in all manner of competitions, whether it be in terms of winning prizes and scholarships or being recognised for hard work and academic prowess, you have done us proud. Again, my thanks to everyone who's come here to support you this evening and for all of the support that you have provided over the years to these students uh, and to everyone who's contributed in so many different ways, whether it be in terms of financial support, whether it be in terms of time, energy and enthusiasm for all of the activities of our students. Uh, there is time, I think, to continue to uh, drink uh, some of the wine and the re refreshments and to mix and talk with others here. Uh, but on behalf of all the members of the Law School, thank you for attending this evening. <laughs> <laughs>